Okay, hi everybody. I'm Mike. And I'm Jennifer. And we are the Wendlands, and this is um, RV Q&A. And uh, this is the first time we have tried this on our Facebook page, which is where we are right now. So uh, for those of you who are tuning in and wondering why we're doing this on a Facebook page instead of our Facebook group, we probably should explain a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I set up when I started this whole RVing adventure that we are on now about five years ago was uh, a Facebook page that, where we are right now. And uh, that now has, do you know how many people have liked that? 400,000. Wow. Yeah. And uh, we started that, and then we also started a Facebook group. And uh, the Facebook group has about 13,000 members. Uh, you have to actually join that group. And it's uh, the group, I went to the group because it's very interactive. People can post stuff. Others can easily answer. It's easier to, to track those answers. The Facebook page is where we would put stuff on. And while you it can also add and, and put comments, it's not quite as interactive. But anyway, we, have a, uh, we use that Facebook page mostly to uh, share information and links. And uh, I did a test a little while ago on it, and it worked really well. So what the heck, let's try this. So that is why we are here on the Facebook page, and we want to welcome you. So what we're going to do is try and uh, answer a couple of questions. Now, you can also answer questions. Uh, you can go online ask and uh, ask questions by commenting. So we would love to, uh, yeah, you can't ask, answer them, but you can. You <laughs> they can, might have answers. You probably do. Well, if you do, type them in. And we should be able to um, to follow those, I think. So that's what we're going to try and do. And we hope that uh, all of this will, will work well and that you are hearing us well. So uh, first question, Jennifer. Uh, all right, Michael. Here's a question for you. For me. I saw you dewinterized your RV last week. Not me. We're waiting until May. I saw the temperatures drop to the low 30s there in Michigan for a couple of nights this week. Do you regret draining out the antifreeze? <laughs> Shouldn't you have waited? Um, Larry in Pennsylvania. All right, Larry. Well, you, you're not the only one to have asked me that. We have actually had a number of people ask. No, I didn't regret it. Uh, it did. It got down to about uh, 30 degrees uh, last night and about the same the night before. So it's about two degrees below freezing Fahrenheit for you folks up in Canada. Uh, or zero for you, almost almost zero for you. Uh, we did. I uh, took all the antifreeze out. We went. Uh, uh, we were on an RV trip last week, and we just were sick. You and, were sick. Yeah, oh. it's my fault. I'm the one who was encouraging you to get the antifreeze out of it because we were going on a trip. If we hadn't been going on that trip, I wouldn't have encouraged you to take it out. Yeah. Well, we don't like it. We don't like the smell of the antifreeze, and it's kind of, you know, we like to be able to flush the toilet in there. So. Uh, that's what we uh, that's what we were doing, and uh, we used that, and we un we we took all of the um, antifreeze out, and we filled the fresh water tanks, and it's been fine. Temperature's been over freezing up until the last two nights when yesterday, for example, it snowed here in Michigan, which is where we're coming to you from. But because uh, it was only below freezing for just a few hours, you don't really have to worry about that. Where you really have to worry is when it is um, below, say, 28 for prolonged uh, multi-hour events. Uh, if, the, if, the, if there's an inch puddle on the ground and that freezes, that tells you you've got to worry about that for your RV. You want antifreeze in it. But we are past that stage, I am confident, here in Michigan. And uh, as a result of that, uh, I am glad I uh, took the antifreeze out. And uh, we've got fresh water in the tank. We're about ready to go on another trip even next week, or this coming week, that we're about to start. And, um, I've, I've, you know, I rushed spring. I meant it. It could have gotten bad, but I didn't think it would. I looked at the long-range forecast. So my bottom line is no, I, I am not upset about that at all. And I'm so glad it didn't freeze. I see Chris has sent us a question, and Chris is thinking about buying a pop-up. Any thoughts on what kind is best, and do they have bathrooms? And then we'll get to that and. Yeah, I guess we can answer it right now, Chris, since you are the first one to ask a question as we're live. Um, our first RV was a pop-up. And, and we loved it. It was uh, a Coleman. Yes, with three kids and a dog. Now, I know some of the larger ones that are almost, you know, have hard sides, and some of the larger ones now do have bathrooms in them. But what most people do is use a porta potty 
and uh, they don't have, uh, I've not seen any of them with a separate room for a porta potty, so you got to kind of kick everybody out uh, to get some privacy, and then of course you empty the porta potty in a, in a dump or in a public rest area. And you threatened everybody's life if they used the porta potty. I did. I did. Uh, I did. A, a, indeed, I did when we were uh, when we were <laughs> camping. But uh, we loved our our, um, our pop up. You could tow it with just about anything. Now, the other thing you might want to consider, Chris, is some of the super lightweight RVs out there. Uh, our um, sponsors, the Heimer people, who uh, are some of our sponsors for our podcast. Uh, they uh, make some now that can be towed with like a Honda Civic. Uh, I think even lighter than that, they were showing one on one of those PT Cruisers that wow. one of the shows were at. So so take a look at now some of the super lightweight towables, which are very small, and they do have uh, self-contained bathrooms in them, and, and you'll like them from there. So take a look at that. Um, you know, I should probably introduce ourselves to everybody uh, because I'm just assuming everybody knows uh, who we are. And since we're now on the Facebooking page instead of our familiar Facebooking group, uh, let me just say I'm Mike and Jennifer Wendland. We've been doing this for five years now. In fact, I, you know, Facebook sends you a remodel, a, a picture to remember something you were doing. They showed me a picture today of our very first road trek uh, and our first camping out in it. Our first, this is the RV we're in right now. Uh, it was actually our third one ago. We've had three since then. That's how much we're into this hobby. But, um, so we do uh, a blog, roadtrekking.com, with new content every day. And for the last two years now, almost, we have been doing a, um, a podcast every Wednesday. If you've never heard it, we invite you to come over and listen to it. Just go to roadtrekking.com. You'll find links. You can listen to it there. And then we have this Facebook page with 400,000 likes. Can I get some applause on that, please? Thank you very much. And uh, our Facebook group. And somebody asked earlier today if I would, they, there's, there's so many road track groups, road trekking, um, would I put the link? And I'll post the link underneath here later on today when, when we get back inside our Sticks and Bricks house. So that's kind of who we are. Um, Brandon says, uh, that's amazing. Where are you guys headed next? Uh, we're going to Kalamazoo, Michigan, and we will be doing some driveway camping. We do a lot of boondocking in this. Uh, this is a uh, road trek, uh, Seth Adventurous XL. Should we show them a little bit of it? Sure. Let's just kind of wander it about here. Uh, and uh, there's the uh, the front. I don't know how well that's all looking out there, but that's our CS Adventurous XL. And uh, we do some driveway camping, and we will be driveway camping uh, uh, in Kalamazoo. We're attending a birthday party for our two-year-old granddaughter. So... Yeah, the home of the Western Michigan Go Broncos, says Steve Atherton. You're absolutely right. Okay, we got another question that came in that we wanted to answer, and this one is for you, Jennifer. Okay. Uh, let me get it up here on the uh, tablet. This one is from Trish from San Diego, and she says, Okay, Jennifer, here's a girl question. My husband wants to go on a two-month trip in the RV this summer. I don't mind roughing it a bit, but I see my hairdresser every few weeks. What do you say, you know, what do you do on the road? Like most women over 50, I color my hair and style it. I don't want to, I don't want to look like a silver haired Mrs. Sasquatch out there on the road. Trish from San Diego. All right, guys, plug your ears. Don't listen. Girl talk here. All right, we're normally, I color, highlight my hair, have it, have it, color is, this is not the norm, normal color. And, uh, <laughs> what color is it? Are you a blonde? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Anyway, uh, but that's a hard one. I, I think you have to talk to your hairdresser and see what she recommends that you do, what product she would have you pick up, because I don't know whether you're blonde or redhead or brunette. I don't know what color we're working with here. But talk to your hairdresser and ask her what to do. So far, I tell Mike we have to be home every five to six weeks, which uh, he doesn't particularly like. And he said, just find somebody out there. Yeah, that, that can. Now, can, that's a guy question. Why why couldn't you just go to, to find a hair? Well, guys do. I know. Well, it'll be an adventure because I think you're going to have me gone over the six yeah, weeks. Yeah, we're gone mark. all summer. So I will ask the woman I go to and see what she says. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go to a stranger, and who knows what it's going to look like. I, I can see that, though. I mean, you've been going to the, the woman you go to, share for years. 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 And, uh, yeah. And, um, but 
I don't know. Can you color your hair? That's a lot of. That sounds like a mess. Isn't that where they like, put I on tin foil be, and all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, I think it would be a mess. My granddaughter calls it painting your hair. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say the guys don't need to hear all this. You know, to take the color and paint the roots, and you have to separate it all. And gee, you might have to learn a new skill. I got a solution. What's that? Wear a hat. Or wear a wig? No, a hat. A <laughs> wear hat. A hat. Just wear a hat. Probably could wear a hat. That's what we do. I mean, this is, you know, this is a big deal to women. to get the right color. You have a certain color that you like, and you might go to a stranger, and they're going to fry your hair, or who knows what they're going to do to your hair. Now, I, I so know talk that, to your hairdresser. That's, I think that's the best thing to do is say, what do you recommend? Is there some product I can buy at a store that, or something I can take with me so that I can apply it myself? I know that you... Um, always get your hair appointment done just before uh, that's right just before we go on the trip so right sometimes yeah. it might be three weeks because I know we're going to be gone a while so I will get my hair you know done sooner than what I normally would but how many weeks was this six weeks two months uh, what were we what did you say to me about how long they were going to be gone um pretty much uh, two months, a long time a couple of <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's about two and a half, three yeah, months. Yeah, most women can go about four weeks, maybe five. And oh, you're then telling your me all these secrets. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. Ah, it's complicated Sorry. being a girl, isn't it? It, it really is. Yeah. Now somebody's gonna say, "Wow, well, you should just let your hair go gray." Well, that's your choice. That if is you your choice. You want it to go gray, or if you want it colored. When my mother, yeah. the age I am, she let her hair go natural. I like my hair this color. I like your hair this color too. I yeah. thought that was in a couple months. Maybe I'll be a blonde. Yeah. Maybe I'll go back to being a redhead. I was kind of a redhead when. Now, now guys are different because guys, of course, can go to a barber anywhere. And uh, if I had my way, I would literally shave. He it. would shave. His I would head. shave it all off. You would. My idea of a cool haircut is one. No where hair. There's no hair, and if when you get up in the morning, you don't have to comb it, or oh, you don't even have to look in the mirror, really. You know, that's the way most guys are. I think so. But anyway. Yeah, you the have things as we much do. hair as you have because I insist upon it. Yeah, I would like to wear it shorter, but she's making me wear it longer now. Anyway, that has nothing, nothing to do with anything. Nothing to do with uh, RVing. And, well, uh, it does have to do with RVing because you guys, yeah. if you want your female to go with you, and if, she, right. if, if the color of her hair is important to her, she has to figure that out. So I would imagine you could color your hair um, in, the, in the road truck, right? Is, is, or is that pretty hard to do? Well, we probably could, but yeah. it could be kind of a mess. Yeah, yeah. well, anyway. <laughs> All right, so those are our two questions. Now, um, we're going to try and do these every week. And I, I hate to commit to a schedule, uh, but we're going to try and do these live uh, RV Q&As. You certainly, by the way, if you type, type under the comments right now, if you're watching this live, just type, and we'll see your comments. I'll see your questions, and we can answer anything that, that you, uh, you want to know. I, I did have a couple earlier. I got to find them from earlier on today that some people ask, and we'll we'll pull those up in a minute. But um, we do the uh, podcast comes out every Wednesday, and I wanted to just give a quick little promo for our podcast that'll be out this coming Wednesday. That'll be episode one thirty five, and that's coming out this coming Wednesday, and that will have an interview with our friend Camp Skunk. Uh, Camp Skunk is uh, uh, kind of our resident full-timer. He was the first uh, full-timer that we met, really, in these uh, small Class B RVs that we travel in. And he is about ready to get on an airplane and fly to Europe, uh, across the Atlantic right now, on a boat, is his RV. And he's going to pick it up in Brussels with his wife, Sharon, and they're going to spend six months touring Europe in an RV. So we're going to talk to him and get lots of questions and about that. And doesn't that sound like fun? It does. It really does. It does. Now, my last time I drove in Europe, we were in Scotland, and we took a car to drive all around Scotland, and I drove from the rental company to okay. a petrol station and immediately uh, scraped up the left side of the car because yeah. I wasn't used to driving on the right side, you know, the steering wheel's on the right side. But Camp Skunk's uh, RV will be just a typical American wheel and he'll be just fine. Yeah, we've not spent a lot of time in Europe. Our traveling RV, has been yeah. for uh, work. So we yeah. have been to Africa and the Middle East and 
yeah, exciting to, places. Yep, yep. We've, but yeah. we've usually not we spent go cover a lot of time in Europe. When we travel in Europe, it's usually covering a war, <laughs> so it's not too much fun. There wasn't a war in Scotland. I was teaching or something, and, and we, we had a, weekend, a couple of days. A couple of weeks. You were over there yeah. teaching, and we just gave ourselves. But usually, a couple of days. when we go someplace, there's a war or about to be a war. Yep. All right. Let's see. Uh, can't wait to hear from Camp Skunks Adventures. Uh, that was from. Uh, have to look down here. Who said that? Kale, Kate, is that right? Uh, Katie. I'm sorry, Katie. Uh, let's see. John, greetings from Fort Myers. Do you still use Canary in your RV? I think it was one of the options after your break-in a couple of years ago. Pros and cons. Um, yeah, we do. Um, sometimes. <laughs> Canary is a little device. I don't know if I have it in here. No, I don't. I don't have it in here. Actually, I have it inside. And it, it works off the RV or the um, Wi-Fi system that I'm using now in the RV. And it will transmit audio and video from inside the RV to my smartphone. Why would we have that? Well, uh, one, for security. But in our case, the, we, the way we like to use it is we like to hook it up. Well, we're going to be gone for uh, a couple of hours. And our dog, Bo, is here in the RV alone. That way, I can do a quick check. Uh, Canary reads out the temperature inside, and I can see Bo. I usually set it up uh, with a long view, and you can see how he's doing, and um, it, it helps a lot. It is not meant to be 24-7 because it gobbles up a ton of data. Now, that's changed a, a little bit because now you can get, uh, particularly with Verizon, unlimited data. I think it's... Uh, 50 bucks a line or a connection, and it might be a little bit more with the data card that we use, but you can get unlimited coverage. So, you know, it would be a lot more cost effective than it was even a few months ago because uh, the, our, the, um, the uh, wireless carriers are trying to get your business by letting you have unlimited data. So, uh, the long and short story, uh, John, is I do use Canary when we're out, usually if it's really hot and I've got the air conditioning on here, and Bo is inside here. We just don't, you know, you know how hot an RV, you had a tip on that on the podcast, how mm -hmm. hot an RV gets just a like couple of hours. 30 degrees different than outside. 30 degrees, like immediately, it can get to 110 degrees. So. Just like a car. Yeah, very, very fast. So when it's really hot, I like to put the canary on. Now, you mentioned the break-in. We had a question on the podcast this past week about the break-in. And, um, you know, the, the break-in happened two years ago, and we, um, you know, we're doing all right. We, we have not had any problems since then. It doesn't spook us. We're not afraid of anything. And, um, you know, it, it, it really, it really, uh, really helps us. As, as, uh, you know, to, it really helps us to know that it was a freak accident. And, it's um, not something that you have to be worried about. Go out there, enjoy life, and, you know, sometimes yeah. things happen. People ask that all the time. Uh, all right, one of the questions is, uh, how often do you guys boondock, and uh, where do you go to feel safe? Uh, well, when we, we boondock as much as we can. And, and boondocking, if you're brand new to it, let me just explain, it means you're not plugged into uh, outside electricity, you're not hooked up to an outside water, you're carrying all of the stuff you're going to use in your own vehicle, in your own RV. You're running off batteries. And now that battery technology has just so improved over the past uh, several years, we don't really need to plug in. I love boondocking. It's my favorite kind of camping. You go to a campground where everybody's jammed in like peas in a pod and get the campfire smoke going, even though when the kids were little, loved the campfires. Now I prefer not having smoke. Yeah. So uh, I love boondocking. I, I find campgrounds, you know, you if you look at ads from the... Recreation Vehicle Industry Association. You've seen those ads, you know, go RVing, and they show this beautiful RV, and it's, you know, on a mountain stream. Well, there are places like that. We find them fairly regularly. But for most people, they camp in a campground where they're plugged in. There may be huge Class A's. I call them tin skyscrapers next to them on both sides. Not, not that I don't have anything against those. It's just that you don't want to be 10 feet away from your neighbor. Well, that's not camping to me. And, you know, those crowded campgrounds, a lot of them now are offering Friday night, Saturday night activities, craft things oh for the gosh. kids. Oh, my gosh, yeah. It's all what season of life you're in and who you've got with you. If you have kids, and maybe great. you want all that action. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that you want what I want, which is peace and quiet, and uh, and not everybody does. I mean, we've and been when, to some of those. And when we went to Colorado with our family, 
we had everybody at our campfire for the s'mores. Yeah, I mean, but I that think was every all kid, of our own, was our own family, and then the that's right. Was and, then at our place. and that was really good. If you're traveling with kids, you probably do want that. For us, we prefer um, boondocking, being out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we have. Have you ever felt unsafe out there? Ever? No. Have we ever had an incident? No, I I feel safe. Yeah, and, and we camp in some pretty remote spots. There are just so many places you can go. Uh, just when we travel, when, we, when we're when we going from point A to point B, and we're leaving in a week or so, we're going to be heading down to Florida and, and uh, places like that, um, we'll drive 500 miles. We're not supposed to go that far. I know I counsel everybody and say just go 300 miles, 330 or whatever, and quit by 330. That's when you've got all the time in the world. But if you have to be someplace, you know, you might be taking a long trip and you might just need to spend the night, we boondock. We stay in Cracker Barrel back at, uh, parking lots. We stay in um, uh, Cabela parking lots, we stay in uh, Walmart parking lots, we stay in rest areas. In a little Class B RV like this, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, I wonder when even I've, one incident I'm thinking of where some people were intoxicated and they went to somebody's RV while they were sleeping, and that was in a very nice... That was in a national park campground. Uh, in Canada last year, yeah, yeah there was so one, incident, one incident, in, incident in a gathering that we were at, and that wasn't boondocking. That wasn't in the middle of nowhere. Was your, that was, and these a, were just some drunk kids, really, who were causing some issues. But it but was kind of scary for so, them. Yeah, for them. yeah they woke <laughs> up. They're sleeping back here. You, you know, know, your head's right there, and, and then all and of they, a sudden, and you gotta, they had their back doors open, and somebody is talking to them right there. So that that was Lisa. Lisa, if you're watching this, you you you. Lisa's a regular on the road checking group and one of our moderators. Uh, that happened to Lisa, so it's pretty good. Lisa crazy. and Bill. So yeah. you know, I don't know what you do in that instance, other than maybe have the uh, a cell phone if you're really a worried type person, a cell phone, and who you should call in case there's an incident. Yep, yep. So it's always good to have the the park. Who you right. call? Here's a question from John, and John says, uh, "I asked you during one of your presentations in Georgia last year, that was at the FMCA rally. Okay. I think he's talking about in Perry, Georgia, about yep. the new AC. If the condenser gets dirty under the RV, and if you've had some time with it, do you still like it? He's, he's talking about our air conditioning unit, which is from Pro Air. This was the prototype, this RV we're in now, that Road Trek made of an undermount air condition. Instead of a, a, a mounted up above, it is all mounted on the condenser and the fan, the big fans are underneath. Now they're ducked and it comes right up over our head here, but um, it, it gives you lots of extra room. And the concern John had was, okay, driving down the road with grit and grime, this stuff mess it up. And no, John, it doesn't. Uh, no problem. There's been no problems. We've had this RV with that unit on it for over two years. We've done close to 100,000 miles on it, and there's been no problem. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been great. I really like it. Uh, it's noisy, you know, like all RV air conditioners are. I, I think that's not quite as noisy the one we have here, the Pro Air. Yeah, I don't think it's quite as noisy. It's noisy not quite as, as noisy as, the, as the traditional ones. So I would, I, I'm a big believer in the undermount. It's kind of nice, and uh, and the fan and the compressor are underneath, and um, just it has not been a problem. It's been a really great system. Uh, we had uh, a glitch with it. Um, I bumped awesome. something. Uh, it, Okay, it was operator error. I backed into something. All right, I hate to admit these things, but anyway, I took it to directly to the pro error people in uh, Indiana, and in 15 minutes they they fixed whatever it was I jarred loose when I backed into something. Something. I don't think I heard this before. I know I'm confessing it all, but you know, <laughs> that's why I think they why we get these things so we can test them out. Uh, John says, thank you for your effort and time to post all the responses. You know, we love doing this. We love all the people that we have met doing this. Uh, I think well, this is our fifth year. We just celebrated our fifth year of, of, uh, of, of be, living this RV lifestyle as we're doing. And I, we had no clue no. how many friends we'd make and the places we'd go and the places we still have to go. We, we can't wait to hit the road. Uh, we're home a couple of days in our sticks and bricks home. And then off we go again. We've been kind of waiting for Bo, to, our new dog, to grow up a little bit because he is a very energetic puppy. He, we call him Mr. Enthusiasm. He kind of bounces off the ceiling, so we're letting him get a little age under his belt. 
Bo is Thumbs 16 months little. old, and he's doing really he's, good. He's being a good boy. Uh, let's see. We have a question from Anthony. He says, I was wondering if you are Good Sam members. Anthony, we used to be. Uh, I did not renew this year. For one thing, um, we are members of the Family Motor Coach Association, and so we get a lot of their benefits. But for another thing, this is Road Track, and with Road Track, you get uh, a membership as well that will do road assistance, and so we have that. And then we also have road assistance with our insurance that we get our RV dealership through. So um, the only reason I think I would be a Good Sam member again was to get discounts uh, at Good Sam Campgrounds or uh, Camping World. I think they get a 10% discount at the campgrounds, and they have special pricing for members at Camping World. And that's a if, if you do a, if you buy a lot of accessories and stuff, that's a pretty good deal. And if you camp at Good Sam Campgrounds, it's a good deal. But we don't camp at campgrounds very much. No, we try not to. And uh, so I, um, I, I'm not a member there. Uh, I'm thrilled. I don't know. I had on the podcast, I think it was episode 133, if I'm not mistaken. We interviewed um, Charlie uh, Adcock from the FMCA, and he was talking about a, a mem membership uh, benefit they have. That say you're you're out on the road like this, and somebody, you know, Lord forbids, has a heart attack or or worse, dies, what, what does the, the other person do? How do you get the RV home? How do you handle it? And this is a program that if you're incapacitated and can't drive, um, they will get your RV. They'll have somebody drive it home. They'll fly you back. They'll take care of all that. And that comes free with that FMCA membership. So look into that. Uh, but look into your insurance company. You probably already have it. Uh, and um, I have nothing against Good Sam. I think they're a great upper, uh, upper, upper, you know, a great uh, organization. But if you don't need it, don't get it. So that's uh, that's one thing. Uh, let's see. Enid King just finished listening to your podcast for the first time. Thank you for reaching out to so many, especially us newbies, with your great tips and experiences. Well, yeah, Enid, thank you all for listening and 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 being a part of it. We love hearing your questions using that voicemail link on the road trucking blog that we do. Um, our podcast, again, if you're brand new watching this, is uh, the RV Podcast. And, and it's another way you can get to us. Just just type in rvpodcast.com and it will link to all of our material. And, and uh, we enjoy uh, enjoy getting all of that. It's been, uh, it's been really fun. Um, watching from London, UK. We'll be home tomorrow and anxious to get my RS. That must be his road, uh, his regular size sprinter, Road Trek RS, out of storage and on wider roads than here. Well, Gary, uh, bon voyage as you uh, come home tomorrow. I don't know if you are on vacation or if you've been working over there, but uh, spring has come. Uh, it snowed here in Michigan yesterday. And today it's knock your socks off beautiful. 65 blue degrees. Sky. Blue sky. Tomorrow it's going to be 70 and Monday it's going to be 75. So I think I think we're over that hump. And all of those cautious people who were giving me grief about dewinterizing last week, you can now dewinterize your RVs. I'm pretty sure that you're you're going to be okay. Might as well wait till May 1st. Now, if you're not going anywhere, if then wait. If you're not wait. going anywhere, wait. Now, you know, we go all the time. We use this as a second vehicle. We're always on the road with ours, and we use it as a second vehicle. It is so hard not to use it as a second vehicle, no matter where you have to go. Even if, if I go to the mall and Mike goes with me, he's out taking a nap or working on his computer. Or watching TV or, or yeah, whatever, you know. Uh, once you get so spoiled once you have one of these. I don't know how, I don't know how we could live without one. Yeah, now this is a, uh, we're in a, and again, uh, this this blog, this page, our podcast, the RV podcast, our road trekking blog, this is for everybody. We happen to use the name Road Trekking, because it's a cool name, don't you think? I came up with that five years ago. I based it on the name of the RV we bought, which was Road Trek, so hey, we'll be Road Trekking, and that's just stayed with me, but you don't have to own a road trek to be a part of this. This is a lifestyle. It's an attitude. Road trekkers are those who just love to go out and explore God's creation and have fun out there and meet other people. And that's what this is about. So whether you're in a pop-up, a tent, a, a big class A, a C, class C, or a class B, uh, you, you know, we're all in there. We're all in there. So uh, Kirk uh, Grable says, great tips, first time viewer, and you're enjoying it. Well, we're, we, let us know if you would like us to do this. We, we thought about it. We were talking last night. And we said, you know, we, we should just use Facebook Live. This technology is so incredible now. Um, so we will try and do this on a weekly basis. It might not be as long as this one, 
but where we'll answer some of the email questions we get or some of the questions that we can't answer on the weekly RV podcast, but we can do it that way, right? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Well, thank you all for watching, and uh, it is always, uh, I wish we could see you as well. It's kind of fun to see your comments. Uh, well, let's see, Dottie. What does Daddy say? Go ahead. You're gonna say something. I just want to say how much fun it is to meet everybody when we go to RV shows or when we're out there on the road camping, or somebody's in a restaurant. You know, we don't know where we're gonna be, and somebody's gonna say, "Hi, I know you." From. Oh, it happens all the time. We were coming down an escalator once, and said, and we were just talking about it. And said, "I know that voice. That's Jennifer," and it was her. Uh, it's a little scary. Yeah, it is. It is. It is really scary, and it is fun. It really is. But fun. you're used to that because you were in television for years and radio. Yeah, and but this is different. Print, this is like yeah. family. You know, yeah, it is. It's, community. It's, uh, yeah, um, the fun thing. One of the shows that we are going. This kind of kind of goes from. Uh, let's see. I just saw it. It just kind of went off my screen here. Somebody wanted to know uh, if you've been out west. Uh, where was that? Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of questions that aren't show. They only show up on this screen for a while. But I have my. I have my trusty computer here so I can watch them all. Anyway, somebody want to know if we if we ever go west. We go west every year. That's where we're going. Uh, we'll take off in just a couple of months and we'll or a couple of weeks and we'll be gone pretty much the whole summer. Uh, we do the whole circuit. We do from the southwest up to to Yeltsin. We'll be in uh, Glacier National Park in June for our big. We do these road trekking gatherings. We do a five or six of these every year all over the country. We try and pick a different region. Um, and if you're interested in any of those, most of them we keep limited to about 50 uh, RVs because we have found that's the only way you get to know everybody. If it's any bigger than that, it's too much work. And we're here, we're doing this because we want to have fun, you know. So if it's too much work, I'm not going to do it, you know. So, uh, but if you want to be a part of that, you can follow it. We always are writing about those on the blog or uh, elsewhere on our, one of our, this group or the Facebooking group or the, the Facebook road trekking group. Or the Facebook page. This is the page you're watching on now, and uh, we also have the group. Uh, so that's uh, that's been fun. Um, now, one of the places we're going at the in just a couple of weeks will be in uh, the Southwest in Phoenix, Arizona, and this is a really cool event. If you are uh, in the market for an RV, you want to see what the latest in RVs are, particularly the Class B, the smaller RVs, the camper van, which are so popular now. You need to mark off. The 26th through the 30th, the, no, I'm sorry, yeah, the 26th through the 30th in Phoenix. It's actually in La Mesa, in Mesa, uh, Arizona, right outside of Phoenix. It is the Super B Show, sponsored by our friends at La Mesa RV. Jennifer and I'll be there. Uh, there'll be um, every possible kind of Class B RV will be there on display. There will be Heimer super lightweight towable trailers. On display, there'll be the full road trekking lineup, the, the road trek lineup from the road trek motor coach. Just so you know, people, they'll be there, and uh, we'll be there. We'll be there the the Thursday when it opens Thursday, right through Thursday, I think, Friday, Saturday. Thir yeah, we have to leave Sat Sunday, but we'll be there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We would love to meet you. Uh, we'll be hanging out the road trek group. We'll be doing Facebook Live. I got some this really cool thing that does a 360 degree live video, so we'll be trying that out there. Uh, so if you can't come, we'll do you some tours and we'll show that. But that's the end of April in Phoenix, Arizona, and we would love love to meet you. And we'll them. do our best to make everybody feel like they're there. Yeah, we'll make we'll make you feel like you're there. So that was uh, that was good. Uh, Char Charlene, are you going to Alaska? Oh man, nope. not this year. The, I wanted to go last year. You know, we couldn't we go got last Bo. year. We got Bo. Yeah. I wanted to go this year, but uh, it turns out we've got just so many other places that we have to go. So I'm still hoping up, Charlene, for next year. That's uh, that's what I'm I'm kind of kind of thinking about. And we'll we'll try it. Some other he, questions. Okay, go ahead. All I right. just said we have the energetic Bo. He's got a lot of energy. That little boy. Here's uh, Debbie says we're starting a, to plan a trip from New York across the top states out west. Any recommendations? Um, Debbie, just go back on the RoadTrekking.com blog. I just wrote earlier this week about our favorite trip which kind of followed that way we retra we traced part of the Lewis and Clark expedition uh, out west and then we picked it up uh, the other side of St. Louis and we followed the Oregon Trail so we took that and uh, that was just a great a great trip and awesome. uh, it's all it's all on the blog if you want to uh, try that um, Chris says you ever been to Newfoundland no we we haven't that's also on our bucket list uh, we thought maybe if we didn't go to Alaska we'd go to the Maritimes in Newfoundland 
But uh, so we know we want to do Alaska and Newfoundland. We're not going to do them both in the same year. That's just a little over ambitious, even for us. Uh, but we'll do one next year and one the year after, and we'll we'll figure all of that. Uh, Joette George, we've met Joette on some of our gatherings. Uh, I think up on the Porcupine Mountains. She's in Northville, Michigan, and she says hi. So hello to you as well, Joette. That's great to see you. Um, somebody asked, and I'm trying to find it. Are you in one of the airstreams? Said Eric. No, this is a Road Trek CS Adventurous XL. This is our the vehicle we are, have had now for two years, and uh, we um, we love it. It's uh, 24 feet long. And it has a king size bed, which the sofa that we're sitting on now makes it. And if you run, a, if you go to roadtrekking.com, switch over to the left side, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, and you'll see a little video of us uh, on the left hand bottom left hand side of the roadtrekking.com blog. Just scroll all the way down, click that, and it will give you um, like a 10 minute tour of inside the RV. We we take and show you the outside and the inside, and that's on the blog. Uh, somebody else wanted to know about, they wanted to tour the Great Lakes shoreline. And we should fun. talk about that. That is fun. We did that two years ago, I think. And it, it was a trip that uh, we did, I did not plan much out at all, except we outlined 10 segments uh, that corresponded to 10 stories that we did. Uh, we started, and this was, we traveled the U.S. shoreline of all of the Great Lakes. Now, we would have done the U.S. and the Canadian shoreline, but do you know how many miles that is? Just doing the U.S. shoreline trip was 3,500 miles. We started upstate New York uh, along Lake Ontario, down to Lake Erie, uh, all the way around uh, up through Lake St. Clair the, and uh, the Saint, or the um, uh, up, up into uh, the lower part of Lake Huron, followed Lake Huron around, up in the upper peninsula of Michigan, all the way down. And anyway, we ended up uh, coming down the Wisconsin side, and it was a great trip. Took the ferry across Lake Michigan. Now, there are maps for every segment that we traveled, and you can see kind of the road. And uh, we did 10 videos of that. And if you just search uh, Great Lakes Shoreline uh uh, tour Great Lakes Shoreline Tour on the RoadTrekking.com blog, uh, you would find it, and uh, you'll see um, how neat of a trip that was. We even took the road trek across Lake Michigan on a ferry. It, it was fun. It's worth doing. Yeah. Take your time, enjoy. Yeah, uh, no, that's that's what we didn't do. We didn't take. No, our we time. never take our time. Well, we didn't we go out west right after that? No, we had to go to Maine afterwards. So no, we yeah. I don't know where we had to go, but we always we started in Cape someplace. Cod. And I don't know where, we had to go out west after that. We finished on the 4th of July, and we had a, I think we had spent all of the month of June doing that that travel. So, anyway, <laughs> that's that was one of our favorite trips, and you can find all 10 of those videos. Just search for it under roadtrekking.com, or we have a little video tab. You Just spend some time on the blog, and you can find it. Uh, Catherine says, have you ever been to the Outer Banks with your road trek? Um, just briefly, just as we were skirting our way uh, up and around. No, no, actually we haven't been in the Outer Banks. No, we haven't. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the East Coast. For those of you in the East, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, a, it was, it's the traffic. But down there in the Carolinas, uh, we've been there, but not in our road trek. And we really did like that. Uh, that, was a, that was a nice trip. But um, the water is not as clear as we like. You know, I love... I like we our favorite area is the Emerald Coast and the Gulf Coast where it looks like the Caribbean is that turquoise water. We like the clean, clear water, and um, I guess we were fishing and somebody brought in a big shark out there and oh my goodness! But anyway, uh, the Outer Banks we do need to spend time there. I have trouble getting you to go east. Yeah, and I don't know why. Traffic. I know because I think Traffic. as a journalist, I spent so much of my time in that Washington New York corridor, and I, I did not like New New York. I didn't. And I know that's not the RVing world I'm going to see. I've got a friend who writes me every time he uses his RV and shows me all these places to stay in and around uh, New York City. But, you know, it's just um, I spent too much time okay, doing that. Okay, we got to get you to New York because I right. really want to go there. All right, set me up somebody down there. We'll go and you can guide us around and I'll... I, you can teach an old dog new tricks. I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. We, we don't. That's the one area in the country in five years we haven't spent a lot of time on the East Coast. We did Cape Cod. We did Maine. We loved all that. 
Um, but once uh, I, I get any of our south of Boston, I, I said I'm, I'm going back. I'm going back west. In fact, I haven't been to Delaware. It's one of the states I haven't been to. You did. You went through Delaware. That doesn't oh, count. That doesn't though. count. Our rule is: is you can't count a state unless you spent the night in That's the right. RV in the state. So. That's right. So while you not just driving through. Yep. That was that was it. All right. Um, well, I'm running out of things to say because my voice is going. I was going to say, you and I'm going to get in trouble. I've already boy. trashed the east, yeah, uh, the east yeah. coast, but you can convince yeah, me I'm, big I'm easy. Uh, lots of places to go. So many places, so little time. Uh, wherever you are, it has kind of been fun to meet you here. This is the first time we have used the Facebook page for a Facebook Live. I should tell you, I'm telling you all this stuff, but um, we also have a YouTube channel. And I have neglected that because we're so busy with the blog and the podcast and a newsletter and all that stuff. But we have a YouTube channel and I spent some time this weekend. I've put all of our podcasts on it so you can now listen to them, all 134 it's episodes. It's kind of frightening when we meet, we meet people who have listened to all of them. Some people have actually <laughs> done that. And on a trip, just back to back. It's just like scary. Yeah. And uh, and then I've put uh, all... This video will be on YouTube as well as a bunch of other videos that we have. So... Uh, and you can find that link, as I was telling somebody earlier, go to the roadtrekking.com blog, scroll all the way down, look on the left, there's a little picture with our YouTube um, uh, logo there, and you can click that. Uh, sign up, subscribe to those videos, you'll get al alerted every time you're out of there. Um, all right, uh, you keep asking questions, we'll go for it. Gary says, do you ever have thoughts of, that a bigger RV would be desirable? If we were going to go someplace and stay there for three months or six months, a bigger RV would be what we would want. Yes. But because we move a lot, we've stayed small. But if we have a heart's desire to go park ourselves in Arizona or I don't know where, Oregon or someplace for a long period of time, you probably would want a big one if you're going to stay in one spot. Yeah, if we were going to stay in one spot for, you know, even if even if our typical trips were like two and three weeks at a time in a spot, they're not. We typically are a few days, maybe a tumbleweed. week. Tumbleweed. We're tumbleweed. <laughs> we're, and we're out exploring. And the thing of this is you can take off with the Class B and you just stay wherever you end up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess then, we've never stayed in a bigger one. I've never been in an, I mean, I've visited them, but I've never spent the night And we've never towed one. a car. We've never towed a car. We don't have to worry about towing a car. We can carry bikes on the back of this if we want, and we, and if you want to go somewhere, you just go. You know, we, it's it's real easy. But um, I think that's the difference. What Jennifer said is, if you stay in one spot for a long time, a fifth wheel, a Class A would be really nice. But um, our style of RVing is uh, exploring and traveling and boondocking and remote spots. We do a lot of hiking. And, and uh, we love to just be out and experience it. I've gotten into fishing this year, and um, you know, I want to do more of that. I love photography, and so we're we're really active, and we're on the move a lot, and that's why this is so well suited this Class B. But if you can spend a lot of time in one spot, you would definitely want, I think, a bigger RV. And that's usually the first question someone will ask you if you go to an RV dealership and you walk in, you say, "I don't know what I want," and they say, "Okay." Do you want to stay in one spot or do you want to travel a lot? Do you want to move? You know, and that's important. Sometimes you go to these dealers and they just want to sell you what's on the lot. So um, don't buy at the first dealer you, you visit. And if they give you, you know, it's like buying a car. And if you buy it today and today only, then walk away. But uh, you want somebody that is going to sit down and spend some time and ask you what you want to do and how you're going to What are your dreams? Are gonna, here's one for you, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer, your podcast on ticks. You had a, a tip on ticks. Hey, this sounds like a good tip for you. My son-in-law uses a lint roller on his legs after he plays disc golf. Brilliant. A lint yeah. roller. Sounds like something good to use. We had a, a whole podcast on ticks just a few episodes ago, and it is, it's not a laughing matter. I mean, these are... This is a, this is... The Lyme disease is almost reaching, you know, I, want, I don't want to say epidemic, but... It is causing massive problems in thousands of people. So, um, so be very careful. Be very careful. Uh, here's somebody. Uh, Brett says we want to buy a Class C, pulling a 25-foot trailer. Now, thoughts on buying from an RV show? Yes, best deals always at an RV show. Uh, you know, the kinds that you want to kind of watch out for. One dealer shows. You know. Uh, although even there, they will tend to give you a better deal because they've hauled that thing all out there. But RV shows are, 
we love. I love RV shows. Yeah. I, I love to wander from a one hot to the date other. For to us the other. Is, let's go to an RV show. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we will do that when we're at the Phoenix Super B RV show from La Mesa. We'll. We'll show you all the different uh, B-sized RVs. We'll take you in every one of them. Go, we'll, to your, go to your local places at home and have your notes ready and then go to the RV show. Yeah. Be prepared. Yeah. Do and, your homework. And, uh, and that's, that's great. If you're towing a trailer now, uh, you'll, you'll love a Class C. But I think with a Class C, you'll then have some issues about driving. They're not as easy. So you get someplace and then you got to go into town to get you know groceries or whatever. It's a bigger deal with a Class C and certainly with a Class A to unplug and go in. So that's why many, most people who have a Class C have or a Class A have a towed a car that they tow, and, uh, and it's a trade-off. Like the smaller vehicle, easier to park, more room. The Class C. Yep. Uh, Brett says uh, Indianapolis has two big RV shows a year. Yep, they do. I think he just had one a couple weeks ago. Uh, on our podcast every week, we have the RV calendar. We list the shows that we know are coming up. They're all kind of ending right now because uh, this is the start of the travel season. The RV season runs in the fall until just about Thanksgiving, a little before Thanksgiving, and then it picks up the first of the year. So it's kind of kind of like, uh, like going great. Brett says he wants to pull his Kia Soul. That's a small car. You won't have any trouble doing that, I'm right. sure. Uh, and then there's uh, Debbie, I think, said she tow has a Class C, and they tow a car and a motorcycle. Wow. And uh, uh, Rolf asked, what's the deciding factor between Pleasure Way Class B versus Road Track? Um, both are great, great vehicles. They both tend to use uh, the Sprinter chassis a lot. I think Pleasure Way, I don't know if they still have some Ford uh, that they use. Road Track still makes some on the... Uh, Chevy chassis, and they, of course they have the Dodge Promaster chassis as well with Road Track. But the reason, right off the bat, why I would pick a Road Track over a Pleasure Way, six years. Six years, warranty, everything. Okay? I mean, you find me, in a, you don't, nobody's going to sell you an extended warranty on a new Road Track because you get a six year warranty on it. And that to me is the peace of mind that you need. Uh, plus, they, you know, they've been the number one selling Class B for in the world for a long time. Uh, it kind of goes back and forth. I think Airstream is now selling a lot because they've, they've, they've added some new stuff. But, but at any way, uh, the satisfaction rates are there. The retail value is there. They have a bigger dealer network. Um, but, you know, buy what's comfortable for you. Go in and try all of them. Uh, we've, we've seen lots of pleasure ways we like. We like leisure travel vans as well. Mm -hmm. But the big thing that would convince me any time is that six-year warranty at Road Track. And they have a lot more of that uh, technology we talked about very early on, you know, the lithium-ion batteries. The, they were the first with solar power. My whole roof on this vehicle is solar panels, so it's always topping off my batteries. That's why we just don't have to plug in. So, uh, and we like it. We do. Ron says, can you tow a small auto with your Road oh, Track? Can yeah. We, can we, we can tow a trailer. Yeah, we, we you certainly can, um, and we've seen people who do. I don't see a need to because this is so easy to, to drive around. You don't have to. But we towed a 21-foot travel trailer with this RV. In Colorado. Up and down, up and down all the Rocky Mountains. Uh, we had our daughter and her family went, and uh, it was uh, it was great. We it had a was, caravan. Yeah, it was. Uh, we had it, two road trucks, and we were towing a trailer. Yeah, so that worked out really well, and it was really fun. Uh, well, you guys keep uh, pounding away with these questions, and, and uh, I don't know how long we've been going here, but uh, don't we have a dinner plans with some You're people You're not going to be able to talk tonight. We're going out oh, with some uh, friends for dinner. You're going to be talked out. Yeah, well, but it's, I'll have to do all the talking. That's good. That's good. Uh, all right. Um, I'm surprised nobody's asked us where Bo is. Is Bo still outside there? He was. He took off. Yeah. I don't know. Should we show him? I don't know. If, uh, I, I don't know I how don't many of you are. I there. Because it's the first time we have done one of these on the Facebook page. Um, there may be a whole lot of people here who have never seen our RV. If you want to see it, I'll just I'll kind of take this and we'll walk around and just show you a little bit. But uh, best thing is go look at that video. Yeah, go I to that about. video. Yeah, go to the video. I'm not going to get yeah. up. It's too much work. Yeah. If and, Bo is around, I'll show you. Bo's not close. Yeah, Bo's usually he lies down right he's outside. Usually right out. He might be right outside the door. He yeah. was on the grass, but he could be. Yeah, usually he look. likes to sit by I'll the door. I'll go look. You see if he's there. And you, you can tell him all what we're doing here. So. I tell what we're doing. We're looking for Bo. Oh yeah. He's, a, is, he's not out there? He's oh, out yeah, there? He's there. All right. He's okay, the I'll door. show you Bo. Let me walk you out here. Okay. Here's Bo. Here's Bo. Hey, Bo. Say hello to everybody. Can you say hi? Say hello. <laughs> yep. 
All right, so there's Bo. Did you see? Yeah, that's how much Bo likes uh, likes this RV. He 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 when he's when it's in our driveway as it is now. That's where he stays. He usually <laughs> sits right outside the door. Yeah. If we're going, he's going. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's pretty fun. Uh, it's been really fun watching him go. All right. Uh, let's see. Darn it! I would love to see the unit in Bo. <laughs> I just showed you Bo. Did you see him? Come on. Uh, you just saw him, I think. Uh, well, walk around. You can't. You'll probably get dizzy. I'm just looking to see if I missed quick. any questions because the questions have been coming in. Uh, hoping to pull my key. I got that. Indy, two big shows. Let's keep going. Lots of you asking questions. Uh, let me just make sure. I don't want to slight anybody here. Uh, you guys are all so nice. All these kind things that you're saying. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, best way to turn ramp on toy hauler into a patio um huh we don't have any <laughs> i don't have a toy on that i guess uh i don't we'll know have to go to a show and ask well I, I don't know what the the ramp is i guess what you're bringing you know what you pull in the atvs and everything with so you need something obviously to hold it up and then and then go from there but mo i i, I I would ask the manufacturer, I don't know if there's an accessory that they have, but uh, uh, that's pretty cool. I've seen some of these uh, big fifth wheel toy haulers with the patio. Uh, man, would that be fun to be, um, to be tailgating at a, at a game with one of those. That would be awesome. Uh, all right, here's some other questions. Uh, we want to tour, well, that's the Great Lakes question. My goodness, you guys have been chatty while we're, while we're going here. Uh, I'm going very quickly through this thing. And people want to hear about Camp Skunk's adventure as he takes his RV to, to uh, Europe. And that's going to be, uh, well, you'll listen to him on the RV podcast next week. And that Wednesday? will be there. Uh, on Wednesday, it'll be out. And he's going to talk about all the what's involved in taking it over, shipping it over, how much it costs, what kind of permits you need. And then he's going to share some of the things that they're going to do in their six months' time. And, and I can't wait to hear. Yeah. Uh, Sabine Jost Washmuth, I hope I got that right. What solar panels do you recommend for a 24 Class C? Uh, as many as you can get. Um, you know, it, it kind of frosts me when I hear these some of these RV dealers say, oh, you only need one panel. You don't. They're only 200 watts maybe at a panel, if you're lucky. Most of them are like 150, I think. Our whole roof, which is 24 feet, uh, it's a Class B, but it's 24 feet, is a solar panel. So get as many as you can. I think I have 700 watts. And, uh, and that would work out well. Here's Catherine. She said they bought, uh, went real quick, she said that she bought a leisure travel van because of the Murphy bed. That is very cool. That's one of the things I really like about leisure travel vans. Those are technically not Class Bs. They're really Class Cs or they call them B pluses. B plus. um, but they have that dedicated ba bed. They have a, a, a big walk-in um, shower. And those are Those are really nice. Uh, somebody says uh, something about a tent. I, you're kind of cut off. Let's see. Uh, okay, um, I can't find the rest of it. Is it okay way to sleep a small child in the road trek? Uh, yeah, small child. Yeah, it's, we tell people, you know, this is really for two people, but if you but you can configure the beds and with a little platform that an RV dealer will sell you, a road trek dealer will sell you, where you can make that a single bed, and you could put a child in there. Uh, what a lot of people do is they bring a tent. Uh, we took our two grandchildren with this boondocking. We brought a tent. And Mike and Bo slept in the tent. And we took the piece of wood that goes in between the two twin mattresses to make the, you know, the king size bed. We took that piece of wood and we put it between the two seats and we made a bed in the front for one yep. of our granddaughters and the other granddaughter and I slept back here. So this makes, um, let's see if we can show it here. This. Uh this is uh, like we've got this set up in a, in a configuration now with um, a sofa, but it sets up into two single beds, or um, you can put a piece of wood between them, and, and it will also be a, uh, a king-size king size. bed. And so we just took that wood that we normally would put in to make it a king and put it across the two seats. And I slept uh, out and uh, in the tent with Bo, it was, like, it was the first night it got you. below got below freezing too. It was in the fall. I think there's a video. There's a Facebook video on that, and you can find that um, if you go to the YouTube channel, the, the Road Trekking uh, YouTube Road Trekking YouTube channel, and you'll see again lower left corner of the Road Trekking blog. 
make sure you subscribe to those videos and that way you can see all the videos we put up and then look for that it's up there it's called uh, boondocking in northern michigan boondock and you can see that how it worked with our do our, our two granddaughters in the tent but that's the easiest way to do it is just take a tent and uh, and put some out but if it's a small child you don't want a small child out there in the tent particularly <laughs> if you're in bear country um, but uh, it works real well just by making that into a bed and our little how old is Rachel? She's 11. 10, 11, and she slept fine. So that worked out uh, real good. She was so happy she didn't have to sleep out in the tent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Although I didn't I didn't listen to you. You didn't listen. Uh, I didn't bring um, an air mattress. I just kind of took a little pad, and uh, I'm yeah. too old to sleep on the ground. But it was still kind of fun. Bo loved it. You know, you, he and I were up all night long as deer were running through. But, hey, we're out of here. You've been great. Thanks for letting us spend a Saturday afternoon with you. Uh, do me a favor. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Lower left uh, part of the Road Trucking Out Loud. Scroll down. You'll see this will go up live on there uh, later today. And, of course, it'll stay up on our Facebook page as well. But uh, you guys are great. Keep the questions coming. We'll see you next time on the podcast. New podcast coming out Wednesday. Of course, we have new content on the blog every day. And then we'll try and make this Facebook Live Q&A uh, a regular. We'll try and do it on uh, Saturdays. So thank you all so much for being with us. And uh, God bless and have a great Enjoy weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.